Check, please. Hey, welcome back to Everything Money. Today, we're talking about Shopify, both the company and the stock. We'll show you the financials. I like this. Paul likes this company. I'm sure Mo does too. We use this in our businesses. We'll show you the financials under the hood, see what they're doing, why their price is all over the place, and what you should be paying for this stock moving forward. We're going to make assumptions about the future so you're not just guessing on where the stock price might go. Paul, I own Shopify. I have a seller account, and uh, it's gone down a bunch and now gone back up a bunch. So it's kind of all over the place, very volatile. Go ahead, Paul, Shopify. All right. So let's pull up Shopify on our Everything Money software. We go to eight pillars. We type in Shopify. Let's see how volatile it has. Oh, wow. Look at that. So back in December, Kathy Wood was buying late December. I'm sorry. I'm, she was selling. My apologies. She was selling back in late December. And then just this past Past so, month, February, mid February, she's back buying. Okay, so she's going to look really smart here, right? My comment back is her thesis is disruption. Why would you ever sell? Mm. What's the point of this buying and selling if it's disruption? Well, she has said never bet against technology. She did or, when she sold. I guess yeah, so. When she says, them. like, well, I saw things I didn't like, it's like, but disruption's disruption. Whether you see it now or later, it's just like value. If I like a value play, I'm going to keep buying it as it goes down. It has nothing to do with technicals or things like that. I like it. I will buy it unless the story has changed. But if her story has changed, why is she back to buying in February? It doesn't make any sense to me. To me, this is an exact indication that she doesn't have a process, mm -hmm. right? Because it's hypocritical to say you don't, you don't short against disruption. Well, you sold against disruption. What's the difference? When I see large, large shareholders doing this as a viewer at home, maybe searching for a process, it gets sort of confusion when, confusing when she says how wonderful it is and then she sells off. Yep. Uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. She but anyway, she's trying to time things. Yeah. yeah, which is the number one rule not to try to do. Correct. Let's go over so the eight let's, pillars. Let's go over the eight pillars. So guys, real quick, Paul. Yeah. November 19th, intraday high of 1763. Yeah. And now it's, I mean. It, the, and it hit a low of 511. Yeah. Amazing. All right, guys. <laughs> so if you're new to the eight pillar process, uh, at the end of this video, we'll show you we'll we'll let, should, show you where you can find out more information about how we created the eight pillar process. But let's start with our first thing. So, so first off, this is an eighty five billion dollar company. This isn't part of the eight pillars, but it's just an idea to know eighty five billion dollar company. What I would encourage you to do: go look up other companies that you can find for eighty five billion dollars, and then as you look at our revenue and profit, see if they seem like a better value. Pillar number one: we want a five year PE under twenty two and a half. This is 142. That's a big fat X. That means it's selling for 142 times the total profit over the last five years. Okay. Pillar number two, we want a return on invested capital greater, five-year return on invested capital greater than 9%. It is 0.9%. Yikes. That's another X. All right. Off to a slow start. Now, I will say this. Their free cash flow last year was four times greater than their five-year average free cash flow. So it is getting better. It is a growing company with better prospects. Its last year PE is 29. But guys, keep in mind, that's after it's fallen almost, uh, almost two-thirds, right? So it's fallen 60% to get to that 29 PE. So it used to be 90 PE. Mm. Okay. Next, next pillar, we want revenue growth over the last five years. So we go to our income statement on our software, Right here at the top, scroll down a little bit. Revenue, six hundred seventy-three million to four point six. Chickity chickity That's chickity check. Good. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Shopify is doing a great. Look at ten years ago, twenty-three million dollars. They are growing like crazy. Now remember, we will use our stock analyzer tool in a little bit. It's on our software to make assumptions about the future. Don't assume this revenue growth for the next ten years. This is up. 200 times in the last 10 years, it's not going to go up 200 times in the next 10 years. It's not going to go to $900 billion in the next 10 years in all likelihood. Okay. Pillar number four. Income. Net income growth of the last five years. Five years ago, they lost 40 million. Last year, they made 2.91. Red flag. Oh. How do they make 2.9 billion on 4.6 billion? Ah, other income and expenses. Boom, 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 boom. Is that a bribe? Is that a gambling bet? What does that mean? I don't know. So part of the job, 
And Mo, if you could look up in their 10K, what is this 2.86 billion? Guys, look at their past years. 135 million, a loss of three, loss of 2 million, make of a million. All these small losses and gains. $2.86 billion gain accounted for 99%, 98% of their profit last year. Mm. You cannot extract. These are other income expenses. These are one-time income and expenses. So that 30 times PE is because of this one-time gain of $2.86 billion. You cannot extrapolate that out forever. It is a one-time gain. If you just Google it, I'm sure it'll tell you what it was. But we're going to continue on while Mo looks for that. Pillar number four. By the way, automatically, I'm out. Just seeing that that thing has accounted for basically all the profit in the last five years, I'm going to look at it and go, it's a one-time gain. That's like you selling your house and making a quarter million dollars and saying that- It was that, pro- that earned you, income. It's, it's earned income and it's going to be forever. No, it's a one-time gain. You're not going to, you're going to do it once every 10 years. You cannot, now there was consistently $2 billion a year. I'd say, okay, and if it's all the same stuff over and over, I'd say that's because, but then the IRS and the SEC would require them to probably put it as normal income, which they would want to do anyhow. That's what they'd want to do anyhow. All right. Pillar number five. We want shares decreasing. Seth, I haven't even looked yet. What do you guess is happening? Oh, they have to be selling more shares. I mean, come on. Guys, very expensive companies tend to issue more shares, diluting you as an investor. Now, the argument would someone say, Paul, is they're they're doing this because they need to drum up money to grow. Yeah, and they're going to grow when it's expensive because they know that you're a crack addict and you want these shares and they know that they can just give them to you at these high valuations. Mm. I don't blame them. Five years ago, 95 points. Actually, we have to go to the 6th year mark. 84 million. Last year, 125 million. Mm. So they're, they've increased their shares by 50%. They've diluted you by 50%. Mm. That is not good for an investor. Now, it can be good because they're so expensive. It's better to take out the shares than the debt. But overall, we want to see shares decreasing. Mo, any word on that $2.86 billion? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's keep going on our... Um, Pillar number six. They're dead. So we go to the balance sheet. What we want to do is our bal- a company that has less debt is more likely to stand. But here's the deal. Mm. They had a huge gain last year of $2.86 billion. I can't rely on that. Now, I'll show you the metric. The metric is we take the five-year average free cash flow, which if you remember from our main page in the metric screen, was $111 million, 112. We multiplied this by five. So we want their long-term liabilities under $560 million, call it. So we go to the balance sheet up here at the top, and we scroll the bottom. Total long-term liabilities, $1.5 billion. So it's higher. They're selling for like 15 times, 14 times their five-year free cash flow. All right? And let's go to the cash flow statement. Cash flow statement, guys. Free cash flow is lifeblood of the business. They can use free cash flow to do one of five things. Buy back shares, pay down debt, grow the business internally, make acquisitions, or pay dividends. Okay? This company ain't paying dividends. Why take the share? Why, why spend money? Why send money out to investors? We need that money to grow. Uh-huh. So we added, we go here, cash flow operations, less your capital expenditures is free cash flow. So we added this line in our software for our users. The average is 112 million bucks. Five years ago, they lost $25 million in free cash flow. Last year, was four fifty eight. dollars Now, where is that $2.86 billion popping up at? So we got to figure that out, too. Because this doesn't look like that'd be a... Fe- this doesn't look high enough for that. So maybe these are the... Oh, because this is the cash from operations. Oh. Ah. Oh. Mm. Ah. Okay. What does that mean? Well, this is the operating... I do like this more. This is good. This is increasing cash flow. Shopify is doing well. All the major credit cards, all the major online, like PayPal's killing it, Square's killing it. All these companies are killing it, okay? Now, the final metric is we take our five-year average free cash flow and we multiply it by 20. It's kind of like a PE and we get $2.2 billion. This is where we want to be looking at the company to buy it at. Oh my God. What was the market cap? $86 billion. Okay, guys, this is a massive X. Now, does that mean you shouldn't buy the company? Not necessarily. Why not, Seth? I figured you'd say no because it just sounds... Well, by the way, in, I am saying no to it. But 
in general, guys, if a company has a lot of growth, let's say for hypothetically, mm. God came down here and said, Paul, Spotify is going to grow a thousand percent per year for the next 20 years. Along with Shopify. Shopify too. <laughs> Shopify is going to grow a thousand percent a year for the next, um, uh, for the rest of the time. Yeah. I would absolutely buy it at this price. Of course. Yeah. Right. But we got to remember that's not possible. It ain't going to happen. This is where uh, our channel and, and other channels really diverge is this probability. You mean logic? Huh. I guess you're right. I mean, that's literally what it is. Is it possible to grow? You know, somebody was making an argument about crypt cryptocurrency a few, like a year ago, and they basically gave a price growth target for crypto. And I did, went and did the math in like four seconds. Like, according to them then, in 30 years, it's going to be bigger than the U.S. economy. Okay. Is that is that reasonably possible? I mean, it's possible, I guess. Is it reasonable? No. So Shopify has growth potential, but they also have a lot of competition. A lot of competition out there. Let's go look at the analysts and what they say. This is the analyst expectations of earnings per share for the next 10 years. Now, keep in mind, guys, how hard is it to guess the next 10 years? You can't even tell me what's going to happen in your life in the next two months. And these analysts are going to sit there and project. But again, I put it out here just to show it. They make $3.30 this past year, and they're looking at $65 in the next in 10 years from now. Okay, that's that's a big growth number. That's huge. But at, at that price, it's only selling for 10 times their earnings 10 years from now at today's price. Are you willing to wait that long to make that to even get a good deal? At today's current price, you basically have to wait until December 2028 to even buy it and have it selling for a price that's even equal to the market, about 16 times earnings. Do these earnings per share estimates take into account the, the selling of shares? Obviously. I don't know. I haven't seen the analysts and how they expect how they how they analyze it, how they do this thing. I don't know exactly. But let's look at the revenue numbers. That might help us. This is Shopify's revenue expectations for the next 10 years. They're expected to do 6 billion this year and close out at 38 billion. That's six times more growth. All right. Not bad. Great. Awesome. But remember, go look at Intel. Go look at Micron. Go look at all these companies, Cisco. Look at all these companies from 2000 that were the, 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 the companies of the future. First off, the ones that even survived, their stocks are down from 22 years ago still, and their revenue and profits up multiple times. So just because this is going to happen doesn't mean the stocks can go up. Just keep that in mind. Seems counterintuitive, but that's what happens. In the short run, everything's a voting machine. In the long run, stocks are a weighing machine. So in the short run, Shopify is exciting. Look at Shopify. It lost 60% of its value, 66% of its value in a matter of months. And now it's up 20% in a matter of one month. Okay, does that seem logical? Does the business really change by that much? No, it's it's all emotion. It's all of our excitement. Do, all, do any of your businesses use Shopify? I, I use it in one of mine. Uh, Timo, can you help me out with that? Do we use? I think Blue Door does maybe. Yeah. Okay. I think Blue Door. Hey, listen, it's a great service. We're not going to deny that. It's a phenomenal service, but there's a difference between price, difference between the company and the stock. Okay. We look at them individually. I can't stand Tesla stock. I have a Tesla on order. Mo owns a Tesla. Seth has had two Teslas in the last year. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love, I think Ferrari is the most beautiful car in the world. I don't own the stock. There are so many things that I can love as a product, but dislike as I use Apple products all the time. Amazon. A oh my God. Amazon. Guys, I live on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I literally go at night and just go, what useless, stupid paperclip can I buy on Amazon just to come home to a package and go, oh, look, I have a paperclip. <laughs> it keeps the economy but, going, Paul. Yeah, but I don't ever, I don't own Amazon stock. Well, a lot of the super investors uh, of the of the, the Datarama stats, the big time super investors, uh, point, uh, the, the Shopify makes up 0.16% of all of their portfolios. So they don't own this stock as well. But why don't we translate this market cap into what we should be paying in terms of a stock price and Paul will tell you right now how to get this amazing software behind him. Go ahead, Paul. So guys, what we're doing here is this whole process of looking at stocks. But the reason we created the software is because our users requested it. Because they said, hey, we want to be able to analyze stocks without waiting for you to make a video. So we made the software. It includes everything you saw. Everything will come on your mobile phone. Literally everything you just saw is on your mobile phone. You have the eight pillars, retirement calculator, stock analyzer tool, which you'll see next. Eight pillar portfolio. Exclusive video content every single day. Seth, Mo, and I release videos that are just available to our users on our software. 
in our watch list. This is new. When we do our stock analyzer tool, we can look at the stock price and add a point where we say, notify me when the stock hits this price. Sure. But the biggest thing, this Everything Money community has over 6,000 people in it that you can discuss anything you want having to do with investing, life, anything within it. So if you have an idea on Shopify, you can go in there and actually search Shopify, go to the chats where they're discussing it, and have a conversation with other people who've done a lot of research on their own. Because guys, research is daunting. You might as well get a community of people to help you with the research. I don't like doing research. It is boring and slow. This helps you out a ton. Over 6,000 people there and growing. We will have 50,000 at some point, and you better believe people are going to rip apart that 10K together. And this is all available for only $1 per day, less than a cup of coffee. $1 per day gets you everything here. There are two ways to sign up, everythingmoney.com or Patreon for our international years. Whatever price you sign up for today, you're locked in. So as our price goes up and up and up every single month, you stay at your one base price in your one base level. So sign up right now. This is a no brainer, guys, $1 per day. All right, Paul, show me that uh, stock analyzer tool so we can translate what we pay for this because um, this price, this stock price has been all over the place. All right. So be ready to be shocked. I haven't done it yet, but we're going to go stock analyzer tool here. It's like my 10 years of analysis first. Okay. So this question comes up all the time, Paul, people cannot grasp the concept that Shopify's revenue growth has been 57 and 62%. Mm -hmm. So why are you not putting 57 across the board? Why can this not happen every year for the next 10 years? These are the hardest ones to do. These are the hardest ones to do because of all the growth rate. But look at it this way. Alibaba. Go look at Alibaba. They've done 30, 40% a year for the last 10 years. We put, And then now they're all of a sudden falling to 10. We put in 8 and 10% revenue growth levels. Guys, things can't grow forever. Extrapolate this out for 50 years. You'll have, you'll have Shopify be bigger than the U.S. economy. It just doesn't work. So, Mo, give me some numbers here. And by the way, we can even use the analyst expectations. If they're going to grow six times in the next 10 years... What is that annual growth rate? Just trust me on this number, guys, when I say this. It's assuming 19.6%. Analysts are assuming 20% growth in the next 10 years. So to me, I'm putting that as my high number. Okay, because we want to buy this cheap. We want to yep. buy this at a deal, not just get it square even. Correct. So yep. Mo. My numbers, they were going to be 8, 12, 16. Okay, let's, I, you know what? Let's do 8, 12, and 20. How okay. does that sound? Sure. All right, profit margin. <laughs> Boy, oh boy. Um, this remember, get, this did, profit margin includes that $2.86 billion in there. Does yeah. it get better with age, Mo, as the company grows? I profit margin? Well, remember, this profit does. margin includes the $2.86 billion, $2.86 billion one-time gain. Maybe. Remember, this is software. So really, they add, like, I think the margin is pretty good. Like, what's the gross margin on this? How about 13, 15, and 17? I love it. I yeah. actually do like it a lot. It out. Free cash flow margin. You want to do the same thing? Yeah, do the same thing. Okay, give me a PE. <laughs> um, 14, 16, and 18. I like it. And same for price to free cash flow. Okay, and guys, 12.5% return, because that's my desired return to include a little bit of margin of safety. I could make the argument this one probably needs a higher margin of safety, oh, yeah. but we'll keep it at 12.5% here. I hit the analyze button. All right, guys, the stock is currently at 680. Actual Retail value. Price. $81 on the low side, 300 on the top side. So you need to buy this well under 300 to get 12.5% return over the next Assuming 10. Assuming all the assumptions yeah. above are correct. Yeah, I'd probably start searching for that stock around the 120s, 130s. So, oh my we're Lord. at 135. Let's say I'm sitting there saying, listen, I want to look at it at 300. I click the add to watch list below 299.86. Notify me. Done. Mm -hmm. It's just like that, guys. Easy. Easy breezy lemon squeeze. Easy, what's easy peasy lemon squeeze? Is what I would say. I love when you say that. Yeah. So, guys, it sounds like a big number to fall, but again, if I told you mm -hmm. back in November, November, Thanksgiving, that it was going to fall down to five hundred eleven dollars a share by March, you'd have said you're crazy, Paul. Okay. Yeah. By the way, I'd have been buying it for probably a hundred. I would have said it's worth one hundred fifty dollars a share. Some naysayer in the comments is going to say, but yeah, Paul, the war, I and mean, that's what caused this. Cool. Well, the war didn't start in November. <laughs> the war started right there. Okay. So it already lost over half its value when the war started. If you want to use that excuse, I get it. And over time, when you see everything falling, you'll realize that's not the right excuse. But there are still ways to make money off of Shopify stock. Give it to them, Mo. What are people doing in the bidding-ass nation? So the exciting part about Shopify is we have this little gap that needs to be filled. This is the long-term chart. So I'm going to show you guys how we can fill that gap. 
but for right now in the long-term chart, look at this thing. This thing came down in December, and the stochastic is literally on the bottom. It is at 8% right now. Just That's why coasting. I like this long-term, Paul. Look at this. We would have bought one candle I mean, on that, that, that negative. Look at the short that oh, you could have had. Lord, uh, let's see here. Let me try to reset see, this. See, Paul, look at that. We buy it. We get in on that candle and then Perfect. just stay for months. I know. I like right the long-term, too, my right friend. Right when you reverse in here, you would just Ooh. look for whenever you get the buy signal. And then this is the best part about dog stocks. You just get in them, mm. and they just go sideways. And this doesn't look like it's coming up anytime soon, but the price can just trickle lower and lower. That's the great part about going long term. Now, the way that you can make money on filling that little gap right there is to come over to the swing trading chart and just here's that gap right here. So just as soon as you get a buy signal, you actually got one on, what was that, Friday? You could have been in this thing, run it up to this 50-day moving average, maybe a little bit higher, and, and move on from there. There's, ways, there's three ways to make money on this. My favorite way? day trading. We, I think we day traded this this morning. I can't remember, but you popped over 80%. You had amazing buying volume this morning. You had multiple buy signals in there this morning. And to be honest, you're probably still in the stock if you didn't, if you were going by the rules of not crossing below 80%, you are still in this thing from 10 o'clock this morning. So there's three ways to make money on this from a, tra a, a trading perspective. Come and learn with me. You'll be able to do it. Damn. That's good stuff on those long-term trades. Yeah. That's our take on Shopify. Click here in the upper right-hand corner if you want to see more about our eight pillars. There's a full eight-pillar video explaining why we chose these metrics and why we love them. That's our take on Shopify. We will keep you uh, updated. I have a business account. I'm still selling on it, but uh, I definitely don't have the stock, and neither does Paul. But maybe in the future, one day, Paul, when it falls. Maybe so. Final thumbs up. Subscribe. See you next video. Thanks for watching.